Kelly, thanks for making time to talk with me today. Um, we're going to talk with Kelly Louise, who's the founder and executive director of the Impact Travel Alliance, which grew out of the States, but now has chapters in a number of other countries. It's a really interesting development, Kelly, and perhaps on another occasion, you and I will talk about the Impact Travel Alliance and its relationship to responsible tourism. But today, what I wanted to talk to you about, and, uh, and you've agreed to talk about it, is, is what tourists particularly, I think, can do to help with the maintenance of biodiversity around the world. And we'd love to hear your, your thoughts on what the travellers and tourists can do to make a positive contribution to biodiversity conservation. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm excited to, um, to share my perspective and to talk a little bit about um, how we've been teaching travelers to explore in a way that does support conservation and biodiversity efforts. So if, if, I, was, uh, if I was off to Uganda and I said to you, um, come on Kelly, what would you advise me to do to help conservation in Uganda? Um, what would you say? Um, so we actually just hosted an event on this topic um, because in Uganda, um, one thing that um, a lot of travelers don't necessarily understand is how tightly um, related it is to support um, to support locals as well as to support protecting the environment. And in the midst of the pandemic, um, what has been happening over there is that um, due to the lack of tourists, and that's both from an economic standpoint as well as a visibility standpoint, um, there's actually been a rise in poaching. And um, so we connected with a, um, a sustainable tourism expert who's based in Uganda. Um, his name is James Nadiope. Um, he's the CEO and founder of Justice Tourism. Um, and he basically helped to explain to our community of travelers um, what's happening right, right now, why it's happening, and also how travelers can support whether they're visiting or whether they're staying at home. And I, I think what's really important in this conversation, um, especially as you start to dig deeper and look at um, something like protecting gorillas or protecting um, the animals that are in that region and how that's all related to supporting locals as well, is that um, we tend to have this natural instinct to think about um, something like poaching as bad and conservation as good. Um, and that snowballs a bit um, to thinking that poachers are bad. Uh, and I think it's really important to understand, um, and I loved how James shared a perspective around this that says this is the situation from the pandemic that has really forced a lot of um, individuals into situations where they have to go out um, in order to survive and to feed their families. Um, and it's a really, it's a tragic story in the sense that um, previously as well, there's a lot of poachers um, who are reformed and they then become guides because they're able to support their um, families and their livelihoods through something um, like being able to take travelers into that region. And um, so what we're really trying to do at Impact Travel Alliance is to take these bigger picture ideas um, such as travel and conservation, um, and our community of travelers are really excited about the fact that they can go somewhere like Uganda and go gorilla checking um, and also have these really great experiences like cooking classes or learning art from locals. Um, and the more that you dig into that and understand um, sustainable tourism and responsible practices, the more that you see that that's a better experience for travelers as well as the destination itself, um, both from a local standpoint economic standpoint and um, ultimately um, talking about biodiversity today, being able to protect our world. So we're trying to take big conversations like that and break it down into uh, easy to understand options for travelers. What sort of response are you finding from the travelers who you're talking with? Are they mm -hmm. supportive of this? They are, um, they're so supportive. I, I think that um, it's, 2020 has been a hard, a hard year, especially for the tourism industry. Um, one thing that I'm grateful for with Impact Travel Alliance um, is that we've actually grown a lot in this time frame, um, and that is partially because we've shifted into more of a, a digital format, um, and it's 
easier to go to an event if it's online as opposed to um, attending an event here in New York City. Um, yeah. So that has um, that's worked in our favor in many ways and it has um, helped to grow and expand our audience. And the way that we always frame it to travelers is one thing that we've seen um, within the industry is there's a, a lot of talk around um, different phrases like regenerative travel or the circular economy, ecotourism, greenwashing. Um, and so there's all of these things that we talk about within the industry. And um, when you're in the industry, you know what the differences are between each of them, but because those are often subtle differences, uh, it's very confusing for travelers. And we try to frame um, our traveler facing messaging in um, a, a more straightforward way um, that's ultimately saying our agenda is to protect the environment and to support locals. And here's how it ties into responsible practices or sustainable tourism or um, any of those other words that they often hear about within the industry. But I think from looking at it from a little bit of a broader angle, um, that helps a traveler understand like, yes, this is something I'm definitely interested in. I care about the environment. I want to travel. Um, and then we're able to help break that down for them and so that they can understand more of the complexities. So what if, what if I wanted to go, I mean, what's your view about how tourists should behave post COVID or were behaving before COVID in terms of their interactions with biodiversity on the ground in the country? I mean, one of the issues around the gorillas in Uganda is how close the tourists are allowed to get to, to the gorillas. In India, there's a big issue around how close the tourists get to the tigers and the extent to which they crowd the tigers so they can't, um, they can't feed or, or breed in, in, in a normal way. I, what, how do you find tourists respond to those kinds of messages? One thing that we try not to do with our messaging is tell travelers what they can't do. Uh, sure. I think that that's, um, it's a challenge for travelers when they know that they, they don't intentionally want to hurt a gorilla or a tiger or an elephant, but often what you hear within responsible tourism practices is that you can't ride elephants, you can't do this, you can't do that, don't take seashells, like don't, don't do all of these things. And no. we try to frame it more, um, we just flip it a bit and say, um, like here's opportunities to connect with wildlife um, in a way that is exhilarating for you as an individual, um, but also it's not harmful to that animal. Uh, so we'll tend to, to talk, if we say don't do something, we'll offer an alternative. Um, so if we're talking about not riding an elephant, uh, there's still up other opportunities to, to go sure. on a safari. Uh, and I think that just that, if you are telling them not to do something and if you offer an alternative and you explain why, travelers are very supportive of that. Um, nobody's riding an elephant because they want to hurt the elephant. They're riding sure. the elephant because they like the elephant and they just don't know. Um, so we just, um, we incorporate that messaging into saying, we know that you care about the wildlife and um, here's ways to connect with it on a deeper level um, and do so in a way um, that supports natural biodiversity and ecosystems yeah. and, and all of those things that you're excited about in the first place. So do you think that this issue of biodiversity loss is going to become more important with your organization in Travel Impact? We, um, it's part of our core mission statement. Um, again, our our agenda is really just rooted in um, protecting our earth and supporting locals. And we'll, um, the way that we use this messaging for our community of travelers when we're educating them is we just talk about um, how all of these different um, big picture ideas are tied together. Um, so looking forward to 2021, for example, um, we have um, monthly themes where we're talking about um, we're talking about protecting our earth. We're talking about peace and social justice. We're talking about all of these different parts of tourism and um, how travelers can think about big causes and um, 
it used those big causes to support them throughout each of their experiences, no matter their destination, their budget, or um, where they're going, uh, where they're going, destination, um, budget, or travel style. So you obviously cover a whole range of different forms of, of impact travel. Where do you think in the hierarchy, tourism and biodiversity or tourism and wildlife comes? I mean, is it top of the agenda with people or is it some way down the agenda? Um, I, I mean, if we don't have an earth to explore, <laughs> right, the climate crisis is real. Yeah. So um, so it's, it's a fundamental um, component of what we're talking about. Um, and I think that part of the beauty of travel is that um, if you're able to go out and see wildlife and experience our world, that is what transforms you into an advocate to want to protect it. Um, so we're, um, again, we, we talk a lot about how all of this is connected. Um, going back to um, Uganda, for example, with the, the locals, when you make sure that your tourism dollars stay local and you're booking with a company that is supporting those locals, that gives them a livelihood um, to be yeah. able to act as a guide for the tourists who are coming in and that takes um, someone from a situation where they have to consider, do I poach um, or do I feed my family? And this is an alternative solution that's a win for the traveler, it's a win for the local destination, and it's a win for our earth at the same time. Uh, so certainly um, biodiversity and making sure that um, we are able to incorporate um, conservation efforts or eco-friendly practices into all types of travel is a high priority for us. Oh. No, I can understand that. Kelly, I wish you every success with Impact Travel. It's an exciting new adventure. We have very few organizations to relate to in the USA, so I hope that we'll be able to continue the relationship. And thanks for your time today. It's much appreciated. Of course. Thank you so much for having me.